This video is going to revisit a concept that you guys would have seen in a previous math class, and that's the idea of a greatest common factor. Um, you'll also see, sometimes hear this called a greatest common divisor, and it's abbreviated either GCF or GCD. They mean the same thing. Before we talk about what a GCF is, though, I want to talk about what just a factor is. And I wrote down a little definition over here. We would say that x is a factor of y if when you do y divided by x, you get an integer answer. Integer being a positive negative whole number. Um, so basically, when we divide these numbers here, we're getting a whole number answer. So we would say, for example, 2 is a factor of 10, because 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 is an integer. Another way to think about it is that x goes into y, 2 goes into 10. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor, is going to be the largest, or greatest, number that they have in common. The largest one that goes into each part. So what I'm going to show you guys here, how you find the GCF between two numbers. We're going to find the GCF between 36 and 90, which is the largest number that goes into both of these. The largest factor that fits here and here. So there are other methods of doing this, and if you already know a way to get the answer, that's totally fine. You can use your own method. But I'll show you guys the way that I like to do these problems here. You need to think of a number that goes into both of these, and you need to think of the biggest number possible. One option you have is you can kind of just guess and check. You can think of numbers, check if it goes in here. So do, maybe if I want to try 10, I would do 36 divided by 10, see if that's a whole number, 90 divided by 10. If it is, that's good, and see if you can get bigger answers. But a better option would be to follow this kind of process. If you want to use my process here, you just need to think of something that multiplies to 36. And also, like, just think of a number. So I may say, okay, 2. 2 goes into 36, it goes into 90. It goes into both of them because they're both even numbers. So what I'm going to do is put a 2 on the end here, and then I'm going to divide both of these guys by 2 and see what I have left. So now I'm down to 18 over here, and I'm down to 45 over here. So now I need to ask myself something that goes into 18 and 45. And 3 goes into 18, and it also goes into 45. So I'm going to divide both of these guys by 3. I get a 6 over here. I get a 15 over here. I have to ask myself something that goes into 6 and 15, see if there is something, and I just keep doing this until there's nothing else. So 3 actually goes into both of those numbers as well. I get a 2 and a 5, and there's nothing else but 1 that goes into 2 and 5, so I stop here. The numbers I wrote on the outside here are going to be my answer, so I just multiply these together, and I get my answer. 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. My GCF on this one is an 18. I like this method because it's a surefire way to get the answer. If you just guess and check, this is actually one people, a lot of people would say 9. Um, it's very easily missed, but if you do this process, it's not bad. Now, that's not to say I had to pick uh, 2 and 3 here. I could have picked bigger numbers. Like if I would have saw right away, oh, 9 goes into both of these, then I'd be down to 4 and 10 already, and I could say, oh, 2 goes into those. You get 2 and 5, and it's a quicker way. So picking bigger numbers is still good because 9 times 2 is still 18, but it's not essential. You can pick any two numbers you want. I have a couple practice problems to make sure that we have this concept down here. And feel free to pause at any point and try some of these out. With this first one here, um, I see that, let's see, they're both even. I'm having trouble thinking of something bigger than that right now, so I might as well start there. If I take out a 2, I get a 12 and a 15. And I know that 3 goes into both of those, so I get 4 and 5. That's really as far as I can go. 2 times 3, my GCF is 6. If you have three numbers, you have to make sure it goes into all three parts. So, that's the only difference there. I'm going to look at this, and I think 4 goes into everything here. So I'm going to take out a 4, and that should give me an 18 over here, a 20 over here, and a 50 over here. Those are all even numbers, so I know 2 goes into them. I'll end up with a 9 a 10, and a 25, and there's nothing else that goes into 9, 10, and 25. 4 times 2 makes 8 for my GCD. Okay, two more problems. On this first one here, we have numbers, we have variables. When you have two different things, just take it one piece at a time. I'm going to deal with my numbers first. So, 14 and 15, if you think about possibilities, there is nothing besides 1 that goes into 14 and 15. So 1 is my GCF, and if I would just had 14 and 15, that's all I would do. But I also have variables on this one. So I have 3x's over here, 
I have two x's over here, and I want to see what they have in common. If there are three x's and two x's, they have two x's that go in both. I can't take any more than two x's in common because that's all this guy has. This is my GCF. Final example, you do the same thing with three pieces. You look at your numbers, and the GCF of the numbers is two. With my m's, I have two over here, one over here, and four over here. What do they have in common? Only one, because that's the smallest amount that we got. So we can't take away any more than that, because this guy wouldn't have enough. So I'm going to take out one m. And finally, with my n's, I have five n's, I have three n's, I have four n's. The most they have in common is three. Basically, you look at whatever the smallest amount you have of that variable is, and that's how many they have in common. So my GCF is 2m times n to the third.